I'll put stop. Okay, thank you. So, so today uh, we are uh, going to discuss the chapter about logical vectors. Um, so the learning objectives are to understand what logical vectors are and why we use them, to get to know how to generate them uh, and how to make use of them to filter data, to create new variables and to summarize uh, data. And finally, we also want to understand the effect of missing values in these operations uh, in which we create or use logical vectors. So I would like to first focus on just uh, the operations and um, the missing values we will discuss a little bit later. So it is always about conditions that are um, yeah, that are done on data values. These conditions return true or false. So it is the vector of true or false values that is called the logical vector. And these conditions and the resulting logical vectors, they play an important role in filtering, mutating, and summarizing data frame columns. So the data frame column, in effect, it is a vector, a regular data frame column. So we often speak in this chapter about logical vectors, but in effect, data frame columns uh, are uh, vectors. So a logical data frame column is a logical vector or variable. So it's a vector of true, false, or NA values. So there can also be missing values in a logical vector. And these are quite challenging to deal with in which means that, well, sometimes they can behave different than you would expect. So um, it is, there is uh, a logic in it. And so we will uh, explain how it works, how you can uh, understand this. So what are the operations we are going to discuss? Uh, first, just operations that don't change the length of the vector. So first of all, um, one that generate a logical vector from another vector. Uh, by means of com a comparison, well, that can be mathematical comparison or string comparison or something else. Uh, then also generate logical vector from existing logical vectors or data frame columns, which we call Boolean algebra. And then we also will discuss how to generate a new vector from an already present logical vector or one that you create by means of a condition. So the, those conditions can be hierarchical, but we will discuss that later. Uh, and those are, those are called conditional transformations. So the resulting vector there, it is of the same length, but it doesn't need to be a logical vector that will emerge. But we will use uh, comparisons often uh, to, to generate this. We can also subset vectors with, with the logical vector, so to shorten it, to, to filter out uh, values, and we can uh, summarize logical vectors and other vectors as well using uh, logicals. So first of all, generating a logical vector by means of comparisons. So to do a comparison, we need operators. Um, the most simple ones just uh, take one value and compare it to something else. And we test whether those values are equal, unequal, less than, and so on. Um, and this is, we can apply this uh, vectorize. So we can say, we can apply this between two vectors. So one vector versus another vector. And it will uh, be applied one to one. For, so for element one, then for element two, for element three, and so on, for two vectors. But we can also say, um, is element one of the first vector uh, a member of some other fixed vector? Um, and then it is a one to many. So uh, the other vector can, uh, take the second vector can have multiple elements. And then it will, um, in turn, uh, say for the first element of the first vector, yeah, it is a member of that second vector or not. And then uh, take the second element, do the same. Um, and comparisons are often uh, used. Uh, they are very often used, and they are often the way also that logical vectors do arise. 
during exploration, during data cleaning, during analysis. Unless, of course, uh, the logical vector is already present in the data uh, itself, then you can use it right away, but most often you will generate it on the fly or uh, explicitly. Um, this may sound a bit abstract, so um, an example here. So if you say we make a new logical vector daytime with a mutate um, function, we can uh, set it equal to departure time larger than 600, so which is six o'clock in this in this uh, this case, and we keep the variables that we have used in this operation. So we 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 end up with two variables, so the input variable uh, departure time and the resulting variable daytime. And daytime variable, it just consists of false, true, or missing values. Uh, depending on whether the departure time is larger than 600. So in these cases that you see here, they are small, so the daytime uh, result is uh, set as false. But um, what we have to note is that the length of the table, so the of the vectors, uh, does not change. So we had th this one, and we have created another logical vector based on the first one. So it's just a transformation actually uh, into a logical vector using a comparison. Uh, so this is by using mutate. Uh, we can then filter uh, by using the logical vector that we have created. So we just add a filter on daytime. And what it then does, filter will always, in fact, in fact, filter needs a logical vector. And it will just keep the elements that are true. So we, we end up with um, a small part of the data frame, uh, notably those within which daytime is true. On the other hand, we can um, generate a logical vector with the percentage in percentage operator. Um, and here, so we, we take one vector which runs from one to 12. So this one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And we test against one fixed vector. So the first element, it is present in this uh, vector of three elements. So it's the result is true. Then the uh, number two is not present. So that's false. Number three, false. Number four, false. Number five is true because it is a member of this um, vector. So that is a whole different way, but it is also uh, useful in um, many cases. Um, as you could have already imagined from the filter uh, function that we have seen, the comparison that we often use directly in a filter or uh, also in the mutate function, in effect, in, in itself, it is a logical vector. So we, up to now, we have just um, assigned it to a new variable, which we then have as an explicit logical vector, but if you just pass the comparison itself, well, it will, will uh, look at the result on the fly. So we have indeed a logical vector if we um, make a comparison anyway. So also uh, the length of the vector is the result of just comparing a vector with some value. Um, as we can see, um, the first few um, elements of this vector is indeed uh, true, false, or in a, it's a logical vector. Um, so the logical vector does not have to be stored in, all, in order to filter the data. It is created on the fly. So if we just do what we are already used to in the tidyverse, it is actually creating a logical vector and then filtering for the true values of the resulting logical vector. And we never see the logical vector actually, but it is created uh, in the background, uh, so to speak. So here we end up with departure times that are larger than 600. Um, but it has been filtered uh, by means of the logical vector that uh, comes about by making a comparison. So this is one way to, and the most frequently used way to make a logical vector. Um, but if you have already created explicit logical vector or, or you have them available, um, or you have multiple comparisons that you want to combine, you can combine those uh, logical vectors or those comparisons um, and in this way create a new logical vector that arises from that combination. And so the combination of these logical vectors that is Boolean algebra 
we can combine logical vectors with and or not or the XOR operator, which is uh, either or um, to use between two logical vectors each time. And um, you can also use in the tidyverse the and or and not um, so uh, verbs. So that is quite easy. So for and um, both uh, elements, so it is always element wise that those are um, compared for two vectors. So uh, the and uh, needs two times true. The or name needs at least one true. Um, the not needs a false to become true. Uh, and either or needs exactly one to be true. Um, you can also use um, well numerical functions like p min and p max, which are the vectorized versions of min and max, because logical vectors are uh, immediately converted to numericals if you apply a numerical function. So false becomes then zero and true will become one. So that you can indeed uh, mimic the n and the r operations with p min. Uh, and p max because p min uh, will only return one if yeah if the inputs are have been true at both sides while p max uh, needs only one true to be true in the end so, so that's the same uh, aspect as or this is actually not in the book but it is derived from one of the exercises um, so here we have also the the schema in the book um, of the different operators, but it is uh, exactly what I had been um, saying. So you can um, look at it yourself. But for example, here we see that it is in the center of the Venn diagram if we want to apply the AND function. So the X is the left circle and the Y is the right circle. So these are the Boolean operators. This is an example where we indeed uh, just apply two comparisons. We connect them with the AND operator. And so this is Boolean algebra uh, based on two logical vectors that are created on the fly by making two comparisons. So this is very often done. And in this case, we still make a, um, an explicit logical vector. But of course, we can do it with filter as well and then um, never show it actually then just, just filter by the combination so missing values how do they behave in all these cases um so it is good to remember that in a logical vector in an operation with logical vectors it is normally regarded as okay it's missing so we cannot really know the outcome of the operation because missing it may be true in reality, it may be false in reality. So it is taken to in account, it is taken into account that we don't know uh, what it is. And in effect, if you make a comparison with NA, you cannot know the result because if it were false, then the end should uh, return false, but the, the R can still uh, return true. Then so if, if you make a comparison with missing value, the result will always be missing. But if you want to filter using missing values, you have to use is.na because then it will return true, uh, this function, if there is a missing value and it will return false for everything else. So is.na will never return an A. So that is a big advantage if you want to deal and to count or to filter, for example, for uh, missing values. Uh, Gabby, you have posted that indeed. There is also uh, is.nan, and it is for um, not for missing values or just regular missing values. NAN is also not um, a member of kernel or cannot be a member of a logical vector, but it will be a member of. Uh, a numerical vector, so it is. Uh, it can appear as a result of some, um, yeah, some operation, numerical operation, which is not uh, allowed. So, for example, dividing by zero, um, then it will return not a number, which is also another special value. But it will not. Uh, this and indeed, you can then 
use the is dot in the end to do similar things as uh, we have in here. Um, but for the logical vector, we just um, need the is dot in a. So let's um, test all this theory. Um, so if we have a vector with true in a and false, and we compare it in a, then we have just three NAs because you can never know the outcome. Um, however, why, while when we when we um, just ask is it missing or not with the is dot NA function, then you have true for DNA and false in all other cases. You can do the same for other vectors, which uh, can also have an A's, like in this case, uh, the numerical vector. So it will, in comparisons, always return an A. But in Boolean algebra, it's, enough, it's a different story. Because sometimes, depending on the operation that you do, you can already know the answer in some cases, um, regardless of uh, the missing value. So in the case of the AND operator, you know if one is false, that the outcome is false. So then it doesn't matter what the missing value is in reality. So in also here, the reasoning is still that, yeah, we don't know. So it could be false or true, the missing value, but you can tell something about the outcome in uh, different cases. Um, in analogy with the or uh, operator, when one side is true, then you know the outcome, uh, it will be true. While if one is false, then you cannot know the other side. And so um, you cannot you, you cannot know the outcome because you need a true to become true. And um, we can see that here as well. So if we combine the true with an A, it's an A, but false with an A, it is false for sure. With, or you have the other way around. With the percentage in percentage operator, it's different. It's not assumed, yeah, maybe the NA is true, or maybe the NA is false. No, here we look for NAs. So if you ask uh, this uh, missing value, is that present in the, well, one vector, one uh, length vector NA, so the scalar NA, then it returns true. Oh, yes, it says, yes, it, it's a missing value. There's a match. So it is just regarded as a special value. And this is um, also a good way to filter for NA values. So we could have filtered here by just uh, saying is dot NA departure time if you only want to filter for missing values. but with this function, you can look up the combination, of course, uh, for example, for missing values and some other value. You could also have done is.na departure time or then with a Boolean operator uh, departure time equal to 800. That would also be an alternative in this case. But um, so this is also cool that you can uh, do this with missing values. So far, the missing values in uh, what we often encounter in logical vectors. And then we still uh, want to discuss the conditional transformations. So here we want to generate a new vector um, where each element is determined by the value of one or multiple conditions, which are, in fact, comparisons. So if it's just one condition that you want to test if for true or false, you can use the, use the if else function from the plier. So it's the f if underscore else function uh, not to be confounded with the if else from base r, which is uh, very similar, but actually the sole um, difference, which really matters for us, is the fact that the if underscore else function has a missing argument, which the if else from base r doesn't have. And this is a little more consistent with the fact that a logical vector can have three values. So true, false, or missing. While if else is tailored towards the fact that well, a comparison can be true or false. But in this case, you can also say, what should the outcome become in case that the element tested 
any vector is missing, is a missing value. So, but the evals function, it tests a condition, but what it returns is not just the logical vector that we have, as we had seen with the mutate, for example, but uh, it will return, this is the true argument, but you have to uh, provide then a value. So it could be just a numerical value. So that will be the value that is that comes out of this in case that condition is true. You can provide another value in case that condition, which will come out if the condition is false for a, a particular element. And then this will hold the value for missing. It is, um, it is an optional argument uh, anyway. So if, if um, the value is missing, uh, if the logical is, uh, is a missing value, then you will just return, get a missing value returned if this condition is not, um, this missing argument, sorry, is not provided, which is then the same as the evals function in base R. So we will see an example in a minute, but we can also apply multiple conditions. So you could do that with the evals function as well. Say, well, we'll test one condition, um, do this return A if it is true, return B if it is false, but we can also, instead of if it is B, if it's false, uh, add again an evals. And so nest multiple evals uh, through the true or false values but that's more complicated anyway. And for this case, you better use the case when function, which can take multiple conditions as values of the ellipsis um, arguments. And it will just for each element um, test the first condition, then the second condition, then the third condition until it meets a condition that is true. So the first condition that is true then it will stop and take the value that you have assigned uh, for that condition to be returned if that condition is true. So let's look at uh, how this works. For the evals, we have the condition, we have a value return in case of true, the value return in case of false, and the value return in case of missing. And we had a um, we, we had a vector here that we uh, have inputted um, running from minus three to three and a missing value added. So you see with the missing value at the end, uh, the question marks are returned. While um, for the other values from minus three up to zero, we have the minus VE value and for one, two, and three, we had returned the plus VE value. So you can test the condition and return something uh, based on it being true, for false, or missing. While with the case when, we can test also different conditions. Um, in, in the case of a data frame, it can even be a mix of multiple columns and multiple tests on multiple variables that we test. It ma doesn't matter uh, as long as those factors are the same length, which is anyway the case in uh, a data frame. Here it's still simple, it's just all with the x factor, but we here we set it equal to we test the equality with uh, zero and then we return the string zero and then for uh, negative values we, we return this string and so on. So it's the same as before, and, uh, apart from the fact that we want a zero value in this case, which we could not that easily um, do with the evals anymore because we want to define four different uh, return values instead of the maximum of three that you can do with uh, a simple evals. So this works and it uh, just uh, tests each condition in turn until it finds the true one. So this also means that it is good to, to go from specific to more general if you want to, yeah, to, to uh, do sensible things with, uh, more complex, in, com in more complex situations so that you end up with the most general case uh, in the end, for example. What I had forgotten to tell is that you have also a dot default argument with the case when function, which is an alternative to well, what is actually happening in this example, um, notably defining 
the condition that matches all the other cases. You don't have, you don't need to do that. You can just replace this by dot default is equal to, and then uh, provide the value that you need. Um, indeed, I also remembered, Gabby, that true uh, is was uh, formerly used a lot, and it has been replaced. Um, I have found it in uh, the change log of. Uh, I think deep wire. Um, and it has been replaced um, for a better clarity. I think there was even a better reason uh, than just clarity, but I've forgotten uh, what that was. But it is explained in the change now. All right. Yeah, very important. So, oh, yes. sorry. Sorry, Flore. So it's no. better to you. Use the dot default instead of the true or anything else, right? Yeah. Is it better? I, do you think? Yeah, okay. I think so. I'll wait a moment. I'll try to see. Yes, I have. I think I have found the link, so we can just go straight to here. It's here. So the case when we can. Oh, it's. You can see this. So. Um, the case when has a new dot default has gotten uh, back then in the 1.1.0 version uh, of dplyr. So it is intended to replace the usage of true as a more explicit and readable way to specify default value. So, yeah, it's just for clarity. <laughs> anyway, so it's it will still work, but uh, they, oh yeah, they um regard it as unsafe because indeed you have to recycle the the true in compared to the other conditions where you provide a vector of the same length as what you want to get out of it here you provide a scalar true and it is a bit inconsistent as a condition because it is not a condition uh, or a, a comparison of the length of a that you want to use. So they regard this as a bit unsafe because it has to re be recycled and uh, made uh, a vector of truths. So it will be deprecated. And so it is encouraged to switch to using dot default. I also didn't know uh, this was the case. All right. Very important when you um, test multiple conditions with the case when, or also for the, avails, if, for the avails, of course, the outcomes must be of the same or at least compatible types. So which means that you should not say, well, avails condition true returns um, a number one and false return string B. It cannot be done because they must be combined in a single resulting vector, of course. So the resulting vector can be numerical, it can be a string, it can be everything, it can be dates and so on, but uh, the types that come out of these conditional transformations must be the same or compatible types. You can combine numerical and logical outcomes. You can combine strings and factors, of course. It is more neat if you really use uh, a single type. The missing value, of course, you can uh, use it everywhere. Then, subsetting vectors. Uh, I've actually made a different, a specific slide for this. It's not a specific paragraph in the book, but it is used and in in this in the summarizing part. So I wanted to highlight this a bit more. The aim here is to keep a subset of a vector, drop the rest of the vector based on some condition. So this is just using base R. And the, the idea is, yes, you can add brackets to a vector and put the logical vector or just the comparison in those brackets. Um, for example, let's say that we create a condition the logical vector which with um, flights arrival delay larger than zero. So where, uh, there, where there has been an ar arrival delay. So we, we um, then flag uh, those flights with a delay. And then we can filter that same vector 
using that condition. So this will just return all the positive values doing this. We can use the same condition uh, and apply it to departure time because the vector is the same length. This is a vector of true and false values in the bracket. So it will just filter out the values of departure time that are true. This is very handy. Of course, it's not needed to first star the, the, the resulting condition in, uh, in an object. You can just do this for uh, doing the same as, uh, as this. So you can do flight departure time and in brackets, the comparison for the other vector. So this is used in, uh, in the summarizing part as well, but summarizing logical vectors, we will first um, look at the general ID here. Uh, you can summarize the whole vector, which means um, collapsing it down to one value. So you have a logical vector and you collapse it to one. When you apply the functions any or the functions function o to a logical vector, it will return a logical. If it says any, it needs at least one true value. Means So any means, is there any true value? While all refers to, are all values true? So it is like combining ors and combining and uh, operators, actually. So this will return a logical, a single scholar. Um, the same uh, holds for numeric functions because, um, yeah, they can, numeric functions can be applied to logicals because true will then be um, transformed into ones and false into zero. So if you do the sum of the ones, you get the count of the true values. If you do the mean, you get the proportion of the true values. So this will return a numeric. If you want to summarize a subset, then you can apply a summary function to a subsetted vector. So this is uh, what we have just seen, but you can, instead of supplying the whole vector to any or all or to sum and to mean, uh, subset it and you can subset it on the fly within those uh, within the, these functions, which we will see uh, right away. If missing values are present in uh, the vectors that you pass to these functions, then the summary result will be a missing value because again, it cannot know if it were false or true, but you can ignore those uh, in case of these functions with the na.rm um, argument uh, uh, equal to true, which is also the case for other types uh, of, uh, for example, uh, character or, or numerical vectors um, if you apply certain functions, they often have the na.rm uh, RM uh, arguments. So especially sum and mean, they can just do the same for numerical vectors, of course. So it works the same. Here we apply this in the summarize. So we will do summary for um, on departure delay and arrival delay, we, we add conditions and we say, well, we want to know whether all um, flights had a delay in departure less than or equal to 60, which we store in all delays. And we want to know if there was anyone that was delayed at arrival uh, more than 300 minutes. And then we, we store the result in any long delay. Um, if we would just do that, we would, we would uh, get a table of one row because that would collapse the whole table into one row. So what I have just explained, but we can also group by in this case, group by on the fly by providing the grouping inside the summary, uh, the summarize function. We could also have done it in two steps, uh, flights, then group by, uh, as in the book actually, uh, group by those three variables and then do the summarize. But it can be done like this uh, more since uh, this is a more recent approach actually, which has been explained in an earlier chapter of the book already, but which was not implemented or updated, I think, uh, in this case. So I have done it here. 
So you'll get uh, 365 for the 365 days in a year, or in the year that is uh, presented here in um, in this data set, uh, 2013. And then you have uh, the results. So you can easily see that um, in, in those cases, it was never the case that all flights were delayed, but it was often the case that at least one had a long delay on, uh, on arrival. So this is quite cool that you can do this sort of things uh, in such a um, compact way. Doing the same for proportions and counts uh, using mean and sum will return indeed proportions between zero and one and just the number of how many flights were indeed delayed for uh, such a long time. So this is just the same uh, principle. In both cases, we have removed the missing values. Otherwise, we would, would have just uh, we get uh, quite a lot of missing values um, from the moment one missing value would have been uh, present in one of these uh, input factors. Oh, yes. And here, this is really nice, I think. Oh, yeah. I, have, I see something from Gabby that any can also be used with dates. Can you explain, um, Gabby? So I hope, I hope, um, I haven't said this actually, but I just used it yesterday. That's why this any is very um, fresh in my mind because I'm dealing with a, with a list, but um, using her and map, that function map, I was able to filter through, let's say I have two lists. Each list has a series of data frames. So one data frame has um, certain dates that I want to, oh my God, this is a very complicated example. Maybe I should simplify it. Let's say I have two data frames. One data frame has um, some dates that I want to use to filter data um, in another data frame, if I use any with the filter, like filter any of the dates that are in the second database, in the second data frame from the dates that I have in the first data frame, I can say that any of the rows that are in the second data frame, as long as they match the first one, the first date, then give them to me, like filter them to me. So then I was able to do that. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, because sometimes yes. dates are very difficult to use, at least any function is I'm kind of new to it. Yeah. So actually, I, I've I've understood more or less what you uh, want to say. Uh, what is this about? It is about comparing dates, essentially, and um, or testing for the membership of one date in a series of other dates, perhaps. But anyway, about exactly. Yes, it's about testing equality on memberships and so on. And this can be done for dates, date times, characters, uh, numericals, uh, what do we have? Um, but the comparison is illogical. So that's what we have seen in the first place. So if you, from the moment you do the comparison, you actually compute a logical. And so it is the logical which is then passed to any on the fly. So any can only work on logicals. All can only work on logicals. They they really designed to just look for truths and any will probably stop if it sees it's one, there's one true. Okay, then uh, it's true while all has really to check are they all true, but it's always the result of the comparison. So even while you, you don't see a logical, um, explicitly, it is computed and then passed to any. You could do that in steps as well and then pass the logical directly, ex more explicitly to any. Uh, the same way we have done this with filter in the beginning. It's just the same, actually. So here in the examples here, we do also do comparison. So this could also have been for dates. It doesn't matter. Here is a numerical variable. But it's not that any or all work on the numerical variable. No, they work on the comparison and the result of the comparison, which is logical. 
they, they could not take a numeric or a date or a character, it would not work if you would not test. But of course, then happily, these uh, functions are well named. So they really, yeah, they ask, so to speak, uh, for a comparison. Is any, and then you, yeah, you, you, you give it a condition. It would be, it would not sound too well if you just would say, is any first of January? No. Um, it would you need a comparison. So, but it's very good to have uh, discussed it, I think, because I, I understand it uh, can be confusing at times. There are quite a lot of different ways to cope and to use logical vectors. Um, here we have similar things. So we summarize still for each day or within each day. So we within each day, we collapse the vectors that we have for that day to one uh, value. And here we are looking for delays on arrival that are positive and array, uh, delays on arrival that are negative, so which were uh, earlier than expected. Um, so you actually want to compute the mean positive delays and the mean negative, the, the mean of the negative delays. So for that, because normally when you do the summary, you always use the whole group, that we, the, the whole vector of that group and you summarize it into one, but then you just get the average, um, the mean delay as we have seen, well, we didn't see it, uh, I think, but um, that would be the most common uh, approach. But if you want to do, you want to compute summaries of subsets of the vector within that group, then you can pass the subsets, which you do here. You, you say, well, take that vector, but well, I have a logical, which is this comparison that will filter it by putting that logical. So this comparison within these brackets. So the brackets just filter elements of the vector. So here we filter out positive values, compute the mean. Here we filter out the negative values, compute the mean. Um, and we, well, it's a bit for fun, so to say, we add the number of values in the whole group. So this is not filtered for negative or positive values. So here the, the result is, OK, flies that were behind schedule, flies that were ahead of schedule, and the total number of flies that has been. So um, some, some were negative, some were positive, and then you have the respective means for each of those subgroups of each day. You could do this in other ways with filter. So filter for the negative, then make a summary. But if you filter for the negatives, yeah, you do drop the other ones. So you cannot, in the same way, um, get them in the same summarized function because you have first dropped them with the filter. So then with the filter, you have to choose. Will I drop the positive ones? Will I drop the negative ones? You would have to compute two different data frames with means for the negatives, for the positive, and then glue this uh, together somehow, it would be more complicated to get the result in this way, for example, then, because then to get it as two columns, you would still need to do a pivot wider or a join. Um, so it would be more complicated to get the same results uh, with filtering and then summarizing, because then you have to choose which subgroup you want to filter for in here. No, you say, well, we, we don't do um, hard filtering, we will uh, do a subsetting for each um, summary um, variable in return, which can be diff different between different um, summaries. So this was, I think, a very powerful um, way of doing such things uh, in a short and uh, yeah, a very efficient way. So and that's it. Were there um, further thoughts or further questions? No, it was an yeah. interesting uh, presentation, and I and I kept thinking on this last uh, example that you're showing about using the 
because I, I had I I I don't work so much in, in R, but I'm trying to do to, to do more. But I had something and I can see where I because I had to filter and I and I filtered out. So and then I had to create a vector or a frame with a filter and then I had to join it somehow. And uh yeah, I can see that there may be other paths that lead to Rome, so, as they say. So I, I can do it in, in, in another way. So I will be revisiting that, that, that code that I have. Yeah, I think logical vectors is one of those things that um, eludes me. My connection is unstable. I don't know if you can hear. Um, anyway, it's logical vectors for some reason, I can't wrap my head around it. So I keep reading this chapter and I keep re trying to understand it, but yeah, sometimes it just one of those things that I just, I can't wrap my head, my head around it. But this was very, very useful, like to remind myself that you were saying, right? Like what the function is doing is making the logical comparison, seeing if one thing belongs to a, to a category or not, right? If it's true, then that's what it's saying. It's true, so then this is the result that you're getting. If it's false, then this is the result that you're getting, but it's making that logical comparison, right? So um, yeah, it's a, it's a good reminder. This is a, I don't know, this is a difficult chapter for me. Yeah, well, it's, um, if you would, uh apply this uh, so to say in in um let's uh, let's let's see uh, in in our we can we can have I'm not sure um do you see you see our studio um, in the screen probably well we can just um maybe, yes yes we see it yes uh, let's just do some silly silly things so um let's take a vector of minus one two and five and um, say is this uh, larger than zero for example I have a typo here perhaps I should a bit uh, enlarge this so what this says is making a comparison this is um, giving you a logical a logical vector so this is really it is an operation and the result is logical vector. So at the moment you enter this, you 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 type this anyway in anywhere in in um, in your workflow in your in your functions, it will always calculate a logical vector, and this is what is used then by the function that is around this. This is actually fundamental it's important actually i think to to understand to to get grasp of this so that if you uh, so if you um do then this we can then say well is any larger than two yes because this is actually we, we could have we could also have uh, assigned it to so the results logical this is so result logical it is the logical vector and we can do any logical vector no results sorry so it's exactly the same as providing the comparison directly and um now uh, let's say um we could also yeah so it's every time you use the boolean so yeah exactly i think yeah maybe not just reading but hearing you talk about it and me me trying to sort mm -hmm. of go through it yeah. i think it's helping because yeah i see what you mm -hmm. mean so it's just yeah. saying if any of this is larger than zero then that's true or false right so that's yeah. what what the any the case when that's what they're evaluating right the mean of the subset thing yeah so we can also 
here it is with an explicit uh, vector, but it is just the same. Any numeric vector larger than zero to it's doing exactly the same. We can also use it for subsetting. So if we have, so we have, yeah, we have, we can do this numeric, and um, then well. We can say numeric fact larger than zero. Yeah, it's filtering because numeric fact larger than zero, it's false true true. So if you pass a logical here, it will say, okay, first element I shouldn't take because you don't want it. You have uh, added a false for it in here. The second one and the third one. Oh yes, I have to take it. So we are um, creating a vector of two elements from a vector of three elements in here. Um, this is usually what you will see. It could also be another vector of length three. We, we could do. We could. We could say this character vector. For example, uh, well, let's, let's do this letters. Um, the first three. So this is actually uh, similar as with indices. We also are using brackets here. So the, uh, this is just base R. So then we have ABC. This is uh, let, letters one, three is just the same as saying C then with the elements A, B, and C. It, it's just a character vector. It's just the same. But um, so the, the what I wanted to demonstrate now is it's we can still do this. So we now filter the second and the third elements of those that character vector by because we make this comparison. It's another vector. It has to have the same lengths. Um, well, that's most uh, the most. Um, it's the best way to do this. Um, so, but it, it's filtering. And we also we already have well, numeric fact larger than zero. It's actually the same as we have done here. So the result logical, which is the logical vector itself, could also have been passed. We can just replace this with uh, results logical. We'll do the same. So play around with these things. It's, it's good, I think, to, to, to practice with it. I think you're right. It's just playing around a little and trying to sort of see how I can apply it, right? Thank you, Flores. This has been, yeah, very clear and very, oh, yeah, a, a chapter that I was dreading. OK, thank you. Then I think that was all for today.